Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Anybody else's uh, expectations are high? Hallelujah, the month is not over. Glory to God. We said that every time we can step foot in this room, that we will give God high praise. Come on. When the saints gather together, it's something about the saints coming together. Every time we enter this room, we're going to give God high praise. Come on, because he's worthy.
nobody but God. Nobody but God. Nobody. I know you thought it was you, but it was nobody but God. I know you thought it was your job that was keeping you, but he's our only source. From which all of the resources
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Draw me closer. Draw me closer. 
gonna tell somebody welcome home. y'all so much. Y'all have a seat. Glory to God. We get ready to prepare for the word of God this morning. Man, I tell you, the Spirit of God is something else. He knows what we need when we need it. Yeah. I want y'all to don't never think that the Spirit of God speaks um, without warning. The Spirit of God never speaks. Hallelujah. Void it speaks, should I say. It's always for somebody. That's going to be up to you whether you receive it. But God is, is wide open for you. God is always wide open for you to receive you back. This is the thing when we repent, He don't remind us.
just want to drive off. I don't know nobody who does that. It says the muscles are relaxed and consciousness is practically suspended. I remember when I was in school, 10th grade to be exact, in social studies. Y'all, I don't know what I was going through. But I couldn't stay awake for nothing. My, my teacher came to me one day. He said, Jalen, are you okay? I said, what you mean? He said, do you have like, have you ever been to the doctor? Do you have narcolepsy? I, I, I said, what is that? I thought he told me I had a disease. I'm like, what is that? Narcolepsy is a chronic sleep disorder characterized by overwhelming daytime drowsiness and sudden attacks of sleep. People with narcolepsy often find it difficult to stay awake for long periods of time, regardless of the circumstances. And I said, okay, God, what are we getting? What are we getting at here? He said, overwhelming daytime drowsiness. Daytime, light, the time of day when you should be awake, the time of day when you should be on alert, you sleep. I can stay up for nothing in my social studies class. Social studies is boring. Absolutely boring. I don't want to learn about history. It's history for a reason. I don't want to learn about it, but it was boring. I said, God, what are you saying here? He said, my people are walking around Supposed to be focused, supposed to be on the lover, but they're asleep. He said it's an overwhelming daytime drowsiness. I can't stay awake even if I wanted to. A person with narcolepsy, even if they want to, they can try so hard, but they just can't stay awake. It comes on them all of a sudden. They can be doing good and then sleep. It's a sudden. They said they find, they find it difficult to stay away for long periods of time, regardless of the circumstances. They said narcolepsy is a chronic condition for which there's no cure. However, medications and lifestyle changes can help you manage the symptoms. It don't have no cure. That means we're all subject to fall asleep. You can be walking good today, you can be walking good next week, but each one of us are subject to fall asleep and we're not careful. It says it has no cure, but medications, the word of God, can help you manage the system. Symptoms, lifestyle changes, prayer, fasting, the things, all the things you need to stay close to your father, it can help manage it. If you still sleep or you fall asleep, it's that signs of narcolepsy. Excessive daytime sleepiness. People with narcolepsy fall asleep without warning. Come on, I want you to examine yourself this morning. Not nobody else. Is this me? Spiritual. Don't think about naturally. Come on, take it my heart. Is this me? People with narcolepsy fall asleep without warning. Anywhere at any time. Am I subject to fall without warning? Anytime, any place, every time you look around, I'm falling again. I'm asleep again. I can't stay away for nothing. My mind isn't being renewed. I'm back. I'm into the world and I'm into God. I mean, where is your mind this morning? A somnologist is a doctor who specializes in the study and treatment of sleep disorders. I'm your somnologist this morning. I'm just trying to see, where are we this morning? People with narcolepsy fall asleep without warning any time or anywhere. For example, you may be working or talking with friends and suddenly you nod off. Sleeping for a few minutes up to half an hour. When you, listen to this right here, when you wake up, you feel refreshed. Oh yes. You feel refreshed, but eventually you get sleepy again. Come on. Ooh, how many is that? Of, uh, I know me, God. This week, I, I, I'm, I'm changing my mind, God. This week, God, I'm a praying, I'm a fast. Ooh, I'm sleepy again. Next week, I'm sleepy again. I'm depressed this week, God. I don't know, God. I don't want to go to church, God. I don't want to talk to nobody, God. Ooh. It's like, but you get sleepy again. You may also experience decrease. Alertness and focus throughout the day. Yeah. It just told us in First Peter that the devil is 
seeking. Yeah. He's, he's going around. He's trying to see yeah. who he can get. Uh -huh. And it says that people with narcolepsy, they experience a decreased alertness and focus. They, 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 they can't focus. It's hard for me to focus. Yeah. Yeah. God is telling me this. But I'm sleeping, so I can't really focus on that. God is telling me I'm healed, but I'm so sleepy. And all I see is my sickness, and I can't see past that. God is telling me that I'm more than a conqueror, but my, my issues and my problems are, are too hard for me. I'm sleepy. I'm sleepy. I can't focus on that. God, I know you said that, but you don't see what I'm going through, God. Look at this big old mountain over here. I'm sleepy. It says sudden loss of muscle tone is the second sign. This con condition called cataplexy can cause a number of physical changes. <laughs> you start looking different when you sleep. You don't even look the same no more. You think you're walking around, oh yes, hallelujah, he's worthy, I got the faith, but you look different. It's a sudden change in your physical appearance. You're not the same anymore. It's that from slurred speech. You ain't even talking the same no more. You used to be a woman of faith. You used to be a man of faith. And now, I just hope I can make you. Where is your speech? It's that your speech is slurred to complete weakness of most of your muscles. Yeah, muscle of prayer, God. Yeah, I don't know what to say. You talking about pray, God don't hear me. I don't know what to say to God no more. I'm just mad at God. God ain't heard me. He ain't listening to me. Your speech has changed. You used to say, God, I trust you. God, I thank you. God, I know you're going to bring me out. Now your speech has changed. You sleep. You sleep. It says, where was I? The muscle of faith. You used to be in faith. You used to be so tenacious. You believe yeah. God for anything. Now, you can't even believe God to heal your doctor's report. You can't even believe God to heal COVID. You can't even believe God to heal uh, a headache or whatever you're going through. You used to have so much faith. But your muscles are getting weak because you're asleep. Your muscles are so relaxed. See, when you lay in the bed, you so relaxed. You so relaxed and you just, God told us to rest, but he can tell us to sleep. It's a difference between rest and sleep. Rest in me, but don't be sleepwalking. The muscle of love, you used to love people. You used to, you know, you used to enjoy just talking to people and now you got a bad attitude. Attitude just nasty. You can't speak to nobody. You turning your nose up at everybody. You, you think you better than often experience a temporary inability to move or speak. They're paralyzed. Oh, come on. God is calling you out and you, you stuck. You can't even believe that because I'm paralyzed. I've been, I've been in this too long. I'm asleep. I ain't got no word in me. I ain't been praying to God. I ain't been fasting. I ain't been doing nothing but feed my flesh. So I'm weak and I'm asleep and I'm stuck. I can't move. I can't speak. It say they can't do that without falling asleep. Jesus. These episodes are usually brief. Usually. Lasting a few seconds or minutes, but can be frightening. Mm. You may be aware of the condition and have no difficult, difficulty recalling it afterwards, even if you had no control over what was happening to you. Let's go to Mark 13 and 33. Amplified. This is good. Mark 13 and 33. You don't have to say much. I can need you to take a assessment of your own self this morning. It says, be on guard and stay constantly alert and pray. For you do not know when the appointed time will come. It is like a man away on a journey who when he left home put his service in charge, each with his particular task. And 
also ordered the doorkeeper to be continually alert. They, they, they just keep talking about this alert, being constantly alert, alert, alert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Therefore, be continually, again, on alert. For you do not know when the master of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or in the morning. Here go again, stay alert. It's basically saying wake up. It's time to wake up. Wake up in your spirit. Wake up. Wake up. That's what it's saying. In case he should come suddenly and unexpectedly and find you asleep and unprepared. Nothing worse than being unprepared. You about to go on a trip, your plane leave at five in the morning, and you up at three trying to pack. You're unprepared. You knew the appointment was coming. You knew what time you had to be at the airport, but you still decided to wait to the last minute to prepare. But see, that's the thing. You know what time you gotta be at the airport, but you don't know what time he's coming to get you. We just thinking about all the end of the world of rapture, but when is your number going to be called? And are you prepared for that? It says, what I say to you, I say to everyone. Get up, wake up, be on alert, stay awake and continuously, continually cautious. It's just like I'm constantly watching. Constantly watching. Okay. Mm, I see right there. The enemy is coming right there. Okay, I got some of that right there. Oh, oh, I just got done over there. Now I'm looking over here. Oh, okay, my eyes over here. Now he's trying to come. Prepare. Recognizing it. And I've never seen the, I love football. I love football. And I've never seen the defense not have a strategy or a game plan ahead of time. They ain't on the field saying, well, we're getting the order. Okay. What we gonna do? Yeah. Um, oh, y'all got any idea what we should do? What play we should run? No, they ready. They've been studying film. They've been studying their enemy. I said that the other night at the paint party. I said it jokingly, but it's the truth. You have to be looking for the enemy. You gotta be looking at that competition, that enemy. Oh, he trying to. Oh, okay, I got some for that. Was right there. Let's go to First Thessalonians five and one. 
I'm almost done. I got two more scriptures out there. We're going on. Told you I'm dropping a chicken and a barbecue sauce, baby. <laughs> it got a bone in it. Now as to the times and dates, brothers and sisters. You have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know perfectly well that the day of the return of the Lord is coming just as a thief comes unexpectedly and suddenly in the night. While they are saying peace and safety, all is well and secure. See, that's what we're saying right now. It's our little summertime. We outside this summer, y'all. Who COVID almost gone? We outside. I know I just said, I said, oh, Lord, I'm, I'm ready to get out this summer. They said, when they said peace and safety, all is well and secure. Then in a moment, unforeseen, destruction will come upon them suddenly. Like labor pains on a woman with a child. And they will absolutely not escape. I remember when I was having my baby almost a year ago. And, ooh, I remember Kate telling me, she was like, Jay, them contractions, man, it's like they just come upon you out of nowhere. And when they start, you just can't stop. Yeah. You got to ride the wave yeah. of a contraction. And I remember at first I, I didn't know the sign, but then I could start feeling it coming upon me. And I was like, God, God, take it away. But I had to endure it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had to endure that contraction until it went away. But it's so weird that you can feel it coming upon you. Yeah, absolutely. It, it starts real slow, and then it just comes. Yeah. And then it eases off. Yeah. But you know it's coming back again. Yeah. Yeah. Until you deliver that. And that's the thing about it. Do I want to go through that again? My God, that's the thing about having a baby and having contractions. The thing is, you can't get rid of them until it's time to get rid of No matter how good you feel it in that moment. Oh, they went away. I can breathe. I can be okay with having a conversation. I, 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 I got to stop. I can talk. Yeah. Yeah. All right, God, I'm back again. But I knew it was coming again and it wasn't going to stop until. Destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pain on a woman with a child. They will absolutely not escape. not escape. For there will be no escape, no way to escape the judgment of the Lord. No it ain't no way to escape, y'all. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. But you believers, all you who believe in Christ as Savior and acknowledge him as God's son are not in spiritual darkness. You're not in spiritual darkness. Uh -huh. You're not blind to this. You, this is not new. You know he comes. Yeah. Right. Nor held by his power that the day of judgment will overtake you. See, we expect the world to not know when this comes. Yeah. See, because they don't even believe us God know it. Yeah. So they don't know that, oh, yeah, I've been hearing that for so long. But we as believers, we know he coming. Yeah. He really going to come. So it says that it should not take us by surprise. That the day of judgment will overtake you by surprise like a thief. For you are all sons of the light and sons of day. We do not belong to the night nor to darkness. So then let us not sleep in spiritual indifference. He said, don't sleep. Don't sleep as the rest of the world does. But let us keep wide awake, alert and cautious, and let us be sober. Self-control. Come on, y'all. We got to have some self-control. Yeah. I ain't even going to lie to you. The flesh is a mess. Yeah. We got to have some self-control. Yes, Lord. Calm and wise. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, they get drunk at night. Yeah. But since we are believers, we belong to the day. Let us be sober in my right mind at all times. Yeah. Having put on the breastplate of faith and love as a helmet. The hope and comfort and assurance of salvation. First Peter 4 and 7 says, The end of all things is near. The end of all things. The nice car, the nice house, the nice job, um, all the money in the bank. Um, it's, it's coming to an end. All the things that we're working so hard to obtain. I gotta get, I gotta get. Oh, I wanna impress my friends. Oh, I wanna impress this person. Oh, I wanna stun on this person. It's all coming to an end. They say, therefore, wake up. Therefore, be alert and of a sober mind so that you may pray. 
First Peter, this is my last one. First Peter 1 and 13 says, so then, have your minds ready for action. Keep alert and set your hope completely on the blessing which was given to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Which will be given to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Be obedient to God. And do not allow your lives to be shaped by those desires you had when you were still ignorant. See, when you did know better, you didn't do good. Yeah. But now that I know better, yeah. God has required me to do what I know. Yeah. But then again, we know Paul said, that which I want to do, I don't do. And that which I should be doing, I don't do. Because the flesh is a mess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But what did the Bible command us? He said to crucify. 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 Sometimes we use that flesh is a mess as an excuse. Yes. Yes. I have so many times, oh Lord, my flesh is just a mess, but God said, I gave you the power to crucify. Yes. I gave you authority to kill it. Yes. Right. You acting like you don't have the weapon. Yes. Yes. That'd be crazy. If I'm gonna come in here, mm -mm, mm -mm. I know some people loaded in here. That'd be crazy if a burglar came in here and we just let him have the one. Yeah. Yeah. Now we got the weapon. Yeah. He ain't having oh, nothing in here. And that's the same way it should be spiritually enemy. You ain't having nothing. Flesh, you ain't having your way. I might fall, but I'm getting right back up because I have the power and the authority to crucify this flesh. It don't control me. I control it. God said, make man in our own image. God got all power. All of the power. So why you acting like you don't have one? Why you acting like you just out here powerless on the battlefield? Oh God, the enemy is after me, God. That was me last month. Ooh, you no, know the month before last. God, the enemy is after me. Oh God, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I was hopeless, but I had the weapon the entire time. But I was sleep. Yeah, I was sleep. I ain't take my medication of the word of God. I was sleep. And guess what? I was comfortable. I was comfortable. I, ain't, I, I don't know about y'all, but I love my sleep. Yeah, yeah. I, ooh, I absolutely love yeah, sleep. Yeah. I still be, I can still fall asleep in a minute. I mean, I can be sitting at my desk and if ain't nothing going on, I ain't talking to nobody. I'm sleeping. <laughs> sitting straight up. So that's what I'm saying. I'm sleeping sitting straight up. I know that ain't Sister Lay's story. That ain't Sister Lay's story at all. She be up at 3 a.m. Okay. Folding clothes, husband's jacket together. <laughs> Kayla, you be up that early too? Oh, no, ma'am. Oh, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. Whoo, I slept in last Saturday, y'all. I ain't get up at 12 o'clock. It was bad. Because <laughs> I love sleep. But the thing is, I ain't nothing wrong with sleep, naturally. But everything is wrong with sleep, spiritually. <laughs> Sleeping on your purpose. God has called you and he got a plan for you and, and, and he, he giving you instructions and you just, no. I want to continue to be comfortable. I want to continue to be sleep. This place that I'm in, God, feels a lot better than when you're trying to call me to. Even though I know you know what's best for me, I think I'm just going to stay right here. And we continue to go in cycles and cycles and cycles and cycles. Depression and joy and happiness, but then sadness and loneliness. Yes. But oh, I'm happy, but I'm sad. But I just don't know what to do. I'm healed, but no, I'm sick. But it's just cycles. But I'm here to tell you today you can break the cycle. You wake up, you have the power to say, God, you know what? I'm breaking these chains. Whatever's been holding me, whatever's been plaguing me, whatever's been keeping me, whatever's been tripping me up, whatever's been keeping me stagnant, whatever's been keeping me lazy, I'm breaking the cycle. Ain't nobody got to break it for me. Ain't nobody got to tell me it needs to be broke. I know within myself that I will sleep. So if that's you this morning, just surrender. God ain't mad. He ain't angry at you. He just said, come on. You've been sleeping, I've been waiting. I've been waiting. I've been waiting on you to come back to me. I've been waiting on you to just surrender. I've been waiting. So come on back to me, daughter, son. I'm here for you. So I just 
to encourage you guys today to just wake up out of sleep and slumber. Amen. Give God a hand clap for praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Is there anybody in this room today that needs prayer for anything? We thank the Lord for the word of God today. The word is good all by itself. Glory to God. Amen. 